Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome on the Carlton News. My name is David Serrero, and today is a very, very special day. Ladies and gentlemen, a day that happens to you one in a lifetime, really. For all our wonderful auditors on iTunes Radio, iTunes Podcast, and also SoundCloud, we have the one and only, the incomparable Rose Hartman. For the people who don't know her, I, I'm sure there are one or two people in Alaska who don't know who is the wonderful Rose Hartman. She's a, a legendary photographer. Uh, and uh, today there is also a fantastic filmmaker. Uh, his name is Mr. Mr. Sorry, Otis Mass. You see, I'm cracking my, my, my accent. I'm cracking my English because I'm so happy. And they both did this first class documentary that is called The Uncomparable Rose Hartman that is showing at the Doc NYC, the Do best film festival of documentaries in New York. So today, please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Rose Hartman. How are you, my dear Rose? I'm really so happy today because actually last night, was the premiere, and um, Doc New York City is actually the largest film festival of documentary films in the country. So it's far more extensive than simply being the best in New York. So I was so thrilled to be able to watch the film with uh, 200 persons who had purchased tickets, and it, the film was sold out. And just to hear the reaction, because we had a Q&A, Otis and I were on the stage uh, fielding questions. It was, uh, I, it was really impressive. Well, I, I, I bet it is. Otis, um, I have a question for, for both of you. And forgive me for this question, because it's a question that I ask to all the people that I had the honor to interview. Because there is nothing more exciting for a very famous person such as the two of you are to introduce themselves. So I want to know, Rose, how would you describe yourself? And also one thing that a lot of people want to know, what brought you to become a photographer? My God, in one sentence or less? <laughs> you have as, this is your show. You have as long as you want. Well, I've always been interested in aesthetics and style. And although I had been a high school English teacher, for uh, the early part of my career, I yearned to do something that would really express my interest. And so I started um, doing, a, I started with a book called Birds of Paradise, An Intimate View of the New York Fashion World. And I got to meet people like Ralph Lauren, who would be in his studio in the Garment Center uh, on 7th Avenue, fitting a model. And it, this back, 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 um, behind the scenes fascinated me because I thought this was a, a world that very, very few people knew about. And I might add, photographers were not interested in photographing. I started uh, doing this in 1979, along with going to Studio 54 at night. And then I was hooked because my pictures started being published all over the world. And there was nothing more exciting than opening, let's say, Vanity Fair and seeing my um, uh, iconic photo of Bianca Jagger on her white horse celebrating her birthday at Studio 54, along with Mick Jagger and Baryshnikov and Halston, et cetera. So there it was. I mean, some people might uh, be heroin addicts, but I think I'm a photo addict. Yeah, you are. You are. Uh, the same question for you, Otis. Uh, introduce myself. Yes. And, well, what, and what brought you to filmmaking? Ah. Well, uh, hi, I'm Otis. I'm a, uh, I'm the director of The Incomparable Rose Hartman. And uh, what brought me to filmmaking was realizing how very difficult it would be to have a career as an actor. <laughs> <laughs> and having my father tell me that I needed to have a backup plan. So, of course, I'm going to be a director. <laughs> And that's what brought me to filmmaking. And uh, but what brought me to this film, which is my my first feature, was uh, a you know twenty year career as uh, a director of music videos and commercials, uh, national, international, etc. So, I'm I'm an overnight sensation that took twenty years to create. Wow! Congrats, congratulations. You know, it made me think of Gene 
Chini Hackman, you know, the actor, yes. that he wanted to be, uh, yeah, he, wa he wanted originally to be a painter. And uh, he said, let me have a day job. And he decided to be an actor as a day job. Can you believe? So that, that made me think of him. <laughs> so uh, if I had to describe you, my dear Rose, because again, I'm a huge, huge fan of your work. I will say that your signature in the photograph world would be to take a big star and to make him look like he's a total anonymous and a total anonymous person making him as a big star. I would like to think your, to know your thoughts about that. I had actually never heard that, and I think it's rather interesting to put it mildly. I think what I have tried to do, let's say Mick Jagger was at the studio, and he was wearing a white linen suit, and he was 32. And although there were perhaps 300 people there that night celebrating Bianca's birthday, he was standing very quietly with a glass of wine. I did not interfere with his space but i look to show a bit of intimacy yeah i think that's the word that i would rather use not to say to make them known or unknown but the, again obviously i was attracted to him because he's beautiful but so extraordinarily talented but something about him at that moment made me pick up my camera you have to understand that nobody ever directed me to shoot someone. So it was always my choice. And I would only shoot that person, whether it was Catherine Deneuve at a MoMA um, film evening. Um, I would just pick up the camera because I felt attracted. And I have to say that is always the key to my work, I cannot photograph someone I'm not attracted to. That's male or female, but uh, you know, on an aesthetic level. And and one thing, if you if you allow me to say, is that in your photo, I mean, there, there were some photographers who took some photos of Studio 54 of that. What what is for me the golden age of of New York? But uh -huh. when you were taking it in picture, we could feel the party around you know what i mean we could feel we can even hear the music i hope you don't think i'm crazy but that really what i thought and i want to congratulate otis because the way you show the pictures on the movie uh, you put them with a pellicula you know around in such a way and you did some ken burns by going up and down that you really you've been able to uh keep the um the energy that is around the photo and around your your subject uh do you have a word uh, about that otis i do but very quickly about rose is the reason why you you what you said about her making taking celebrities and making them feel anonymous or, or something it's actually she was attracted to beauty and she was shooting beauty and it didn't matter if they were a nobody or a celebrity so that's what she was in my opinion truly after so she didn't make a distinction if it was an ugly celebrity she that wasn't necessarily shooting them she captured beauty um the film uh we wanted to give it a treatment uh that uh was interesting that that was germane to the subject and not your you know not boring something that was a little fresh and uh you know it's very meta to show the uh the slides and how she marked them up and we just loved that and my editor Ian Mayer uh who is really the co-writer of this story as well an amazing guy uh, also did all of the uh, visual effects and graphic design. And so uh, he really executed that uh, in a way that was uh, beyond my expectations. So um, I'm, I'm also very um, <laughs> thankful and surprised and very happy with how that worked. But of course, I knew what he was capable of. Uh, absolutely. Uh, what, th thank you, Otis. What do you think uh, 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 about how you were able to capture that golden age and do you think that there will ever be that that innocence that there was in uh, in uh, you, you guys cannot see but i see the answer on, on uh, rose face uh that <laughs> that there will be ever again what happened unfortunately i wasn't able to witness it but how did that happen and i want to say really rose be, before you answer me that i cannot thank you enough my dear for having created 
uh, what I will call a time capsule. And I think we hear it even in the documentary. Somebody said, I forgot who, sorry, said, she, yeah, yeah, uh, that it was really a time uh, a capsule, really. Um, t tell me what you think uh, of that before I have two more questions for you, my dear Rose. <laughs> there will never, ever be another time like Studio 54. And I love the image that you used, the golden age. I had not thought about that. Because remember, right outside Studio 54, which is a horrible, horrible neighborhood, rather, shall we say, Drugs, yeah, prostitutes. yes, exactly. And um, but nobody seemed to notice because it also basically, I always said, you know, I would be with my camera, take the subway from the West Village, um, d shoot, dance, leave, take a taxi home. So I, it wasn't as if I was strolling around, you know, at two in the morning. But um, no matter who opens a club. It's gone. The innocence is gone. Yeah. The, now there's always a sign behind the quote-unquote celebrities saying drink this beer or buy this blah, blah, blah. And there's security and there are PR people who are directing everything. So what is gone and forever is the spontaneity yeah. of, again, you know, that Cal Calvin Klein would be there and Farrah Fawcett there and uh, Andy there and Marissa Berenson, but nobody was surrounding them. So it was all, I would say, 100% access for me. Mm -hmm. One thing I want to say uh, regarding the, the, the future of the world of photography, uh, I believe that the fact, and, and I would love to know your thoughts on it and also your thoughts as a filmmaker, that I believe that the, um, uh, the fact that we don't use film anymore uh, I think it killed a little bit the authenticity of the the action of what's going on. Uh, I believe today, since it's digital, we manipulate a little bit too much the the image in a way. So I would like to see to ask you what do you think in the evolution of the world of photography? Well, now everything is photoshopped, so of course there's no naturalism, and I think people will always make the comment, my God, your photos look real. And they were. I mean, uh, Photoshop did not ex exist. And basically, when I started shooting, I was shooting a, a black and white film, and then I moved to color slides. So how can you even speak about that versus today, where, what, you take 10,000 images in five seconds, and probably you'll get one that works. Yeah. That's absolutely true. And as a filmmaker, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think um, throughout history, every, um, every art era has had a certain style, but it also depended on the tools that were available. And so uh, photography has become uh, more accessible, more commonplace. So w I would be looking towards uh, the next Rose Hartman to come from the virtual reality world yeah. or... Uh, because I think we're beyond basic content. Uh, so someone at the uh, Q&A last night asked Rose, how can I be, you know, how can I get to where you are today? Any tips? And she couldn't give any for good reason, because... Well, <laughs> thank you, Otis. Well, I, I believe if someone asks you uh, how to become a photograph, it's because they are not a photograph. I don't think, Rose, that you became a photograph because photographer uh, because you say, oh, what am I going to do today? It was a need. You had to. You had to go out there. You had to chase the beauty. It was vital. You know, I believe that's, that's, uh, that, that's how you feel. So one question, my dear Rose. If you meet Rose Hartman, uh, what would you like to tell her? Uh, you... <laughs> uh, I think that you work very, very hard uh, to achieve some of your goals, which are not at all achieved yet um, and that you did create some very beautiful images and it wasn't easy to do i believe a, lo a, lo a lot of time i want to say also that this documentary for me the only documentary that is at at least at the level of what i saw is the september issue you know because oh. 
this the, the rhythm that he had the, the 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 way everything was shown the interview were conducted there was not a second that i look around or look at my phone or look on the side i was a hundred percent captivated by the, the the filmmaking the editing but also the the subject and the wonderful uh, personality so one last question for each of you uh, i'm going to start with uh, with you rose um you ready what would you like to do when you grow up? <laughs> well, seriously, after making thousands, thousands of images, I would like to have my work at, at a major museum anywhere in the world. It could be London or Lisbon or Paris, although I'm not sure about Paris at this <laughs> moment. It, it, it scares me. Um, but you, having a retrospective, and in fact, last night, just as I was leaving the theater, I didn't know this uh, young man who came over and he said, so where is your retrospective? And I thought, well, so that's my goal at this a moment. And of course, to have the film well received, uh, hopefully around the world. I mean, I'd love to have it open in London, for example. Of course, yeah, and I think this is a, a documentary that can be shown in uh, everything that has to do also with the world of fashion. Um, because I tell you that because a lot of our editors, they are uh, either investors or producer or theater owners. It's a very much oriented toward the industry world. So if some of you have a, either a theater or uh, own a movie theater, uh, you want to show the incomparable Rose Hartman documentary, you would not regret because everywhere it has been played, it has been sold out. So if you want to build a second movie theater, you want to show uh, this amazing documentary and in, in a general way, everywhere you see the word and the name of Rose Hartman, this is the place where your $1 could turn into $2 very easily. The same question to Mr. Uh, uh, Otis Mass. What would you like to do when you grow up? Well, it's funny, you know, people's, uh, people's priorities change. People go through life. Um, I, I'm not looking for fame or money or uh, at this point, I'm looking for a career in which I'm able to make things that I'm as proud of as this film. Um, if it's good, the money will come. Uh, it's not the goal. And uh, otherwise, I would, I would like to find my uh, my uh, my next my my better half, hopefully, and uh, and have a great life that balances filmmaking with also living life itself, rather than documenting it. Well, I think on this beautiful word, we can conclude uh, a wonderful interview. I want to thank from the bottom of my heart, Rose Hartman, who took some time and God knows <laughs> schedule, uh, especially after the, the, the opening yesterday on that great film festival uh, called uh, Doc NYC. From the bottom of my heart, I want to thank Mr. Otis Mas for putting together this amazing, amazing film. Uh, it's even more than a documentary. It's a film, really, for me. Uh, it's a piece of art, at least, for sure. Uh, once again, ladies and gentlemen, my name is David Serrero, and I had the pleasure today to have on the Carlton News, which you can hear us on iTunes Radio, iTunes Podcast, and SoundCloud, the incomparable, <laughs> the title is so well chosen, Rose Hartman and Mr. Uh, uh, Otis Mas, the filmmaker of this amazing, uh, amazing documentary, Thank you so much, Rose, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, Otis. And I want you guys to know that the doors of these shows are yours 24-7. This is yours. You take the mic anytime. It is yours. It belongs to you. I love you. It's really an honor. Thank you so much for being you and, and for your amazing work, which will pass it to generations and generations. Thank you a million times. Take care. <laughs>